I'm Dr. Craig Adams at Paulsbo Animal Clinic. To date, we extracted the upper fourth premolars from Riley. Riley's a little papillon who fractured that tooth. Uh, it's this tooth right here. Um, dogs commonly will fracture their upper fourth premolar when they bite down on something hard, uh, and he developed what are called slab fractures. Slab fractures generally require root canal or extraction to treat them properly. And in this case, the owner's elected for extraction. And I'd like to walk you through the process for what we just did a few minutes ago in Riley. As you can see, there's a slab fracture in the side of this upper fourth premolar. This red spot right here is the exposed root canal. In order to remove this tooth, what we're going to do is remove the attachment of the gum here, make two incisions on the gums, and make a flap of gum tissue. Then I'll section the tooth into three pieces, remove some of the overlying bone, and remove each of the roots individually before suturing that flap of gum over the, the defect. I'm going to be doing a local nerve block right back here. And insert that needle, pull back slightly to make sure I'm not in a blood vessel, and inject a small amount of a local anesthetic called bupivacaine. I'm cutting the attachment of the gum tissue to the tooth itself with a scalpel blade. And next I'll make two incisions along the side of the tooth to make my gingival flap. Next, I'll be elevating that gum tissue to make the gingival flap. Here we're elevating the flap of gum tissue. Slab fracture fragment is really just attached by soft tissue and can be easily removed. With the gingival flap elevated, you can easily see that the slab fracture broke down all the way along this root and you can see another remnant of the root canal right here. So the next step is going to be to section this tooth into three pieces. I'll make a cut from here to here and then a cut down here on the palatal side. Next I'm going to separate the two front roots or mesial roots. There's a root right here and there's a root right here. Now I'm going to remove some of the overlying bone here to make it easier to elevate the root from its socket.
Now you can more easily see the root as it extends down into that socket. Now we'll just gently luxate this tooth with an instrument called a luxator. We'll gently sneak down next to the tooth root and just give it a gentle twist and just hold it. Okay. Thing just underneath the tooth. Insert the luxator, gently twist and hold it. You can see a little bit of bleeding along the, the margin of the gum. That's good. It does that as the periodontal ligament breaks down. Now if I twist direction, you can see that the root is much more mobile. It's just additional luxation until the root is loose enough to remove. Let's give that a try. Just a gentle twist. There's extraction of one root there. Set my flashlight on. Luxating the largest root or distal root. There it's nice and loose. Grab it with the extraction forceps. There it comes, the root is intact. Okay. Now we're gently luxating the third root or the mesial palatal root. Okay, I've got it looks in. See how tight it is in the socket still. Gentle twist. And there we go. There's some attached tissue, but you can see the tip of the root is intact so that it's been completely excised. Cut. Okay, I've smoothed out some of this bone here so it's not jagged, so it won't cut through the gum as we close it. You can easily see where the three roots were. The mesial buccal root, mesial palatal root, and here's that distal root. We try not to disrupt that blood clot that forms in there because that's an important part of the healing process to leave that in place. So the next step is going to be to suture this flap of gum tissue over the defect. Now you can see that that gingival, gingival flap has been completely sutured down and it covers the defect from the extraction site. In a few weeks those, those sutures will dissolve and the site will be completely healed. Nice job.